Emmy, of course, proves me wrong as soon as I reach the front gate wearing her usual shirt and shorts. So at least I know it's not a terribly formal affair, whatever it is. You're early, Hisayo. Not as early as you, eager are, eager are we? Emmy cheekily pokes out her tongue. <laughs> the bus stop isn't very crowded at this hour, which seems to please Emmy, and we end up relaxing a little as we wait. We sit in silence for a while, but I can tell that Emmy's trying to work herself up to say something. I don't have anything to say myself, so I sit waiting for her to talk. It doesn't take too long. So, uh, I'm sure you're curious as to why the nurse thought it was so weird for me to be bringing you along today. I was a bit, yes, but if you're not ready to tell me... Emmy stopped my sentence by placing a finger on my lips. Don't tempt me, Hisayo. I want to tell you this, but I'm just uncertain as to how to go about it. I don't want to keep delaying or deferring. I just want to be able to say, to say it. So say it. You know that it's not going to be that easy for me, Hisayo. So treat it like running. Warm up to it with something small and easy and go from there. But don't do it too fast, okay? I'm a patient man. I can wait for you to get to, to it. Emmy seems to consider my words, weighing them against what is probably a desire to get it over with. I will admit, as much as I keep telling Emmy to take her time, I wouldn't mind get her getting it over with either. But somehow I know that Emmy probably needs more time than the bus ride will provide to get it all out, whatever it is. Yeah, maybe you're right, the bus stop probably isn't the best place for this anyway, but just to make sure that I don't go back on my word, I'll at least say this. She takes a deep breath, lets it out, and after a moment say it, says it in a, low, in a low voice. We're going to see my dad today. Oh my god, I knew it. The words hang in the air, and I can see that Emmy's afraid that I'll panic and disappear in response, which a part of me almost wants to do. You know, I haven't thought of it. Do you think his, her dad could be either dead, or is probably still alive, but in a coma or something? Damn, that'd be so surreal if that were the case, but... I mean, you never know. But it would be stupid of me to back out, or to suddenly abandon the promise I made to be there for Emmy when she needs me. Yeah, do not fucking back out when she says something like that. <laughs> you know? I mean, that is a... That is a really, like, low blow move to do if you do something like that. The nurse thought it was so weird of her to bring me along. She doesn't bring any anyone along. Or at least, I'm willing to bet that she, she hasn't before today. The day seems to take on an even greater significance. What has it taken Emmy to even get this far? Ah. And why is that the best I can manage as a response? Yeah? I, uh, I don't know what I should say. Nothing, I think. Just promise me that you're going to come with me. Of course, you know I will. Emmy smiles wanely, looking at a little relieved. <clears throat> Good, in that case, we'd better get going. The bus pulls up just a little after she finishes the sentence. Vague memories of my first trip out here come to my mind as I step off the bus, but unfortunately they're too vague to be of any use. I will be the first to admit that I don't quite recall how to get to Emmy's house, so I let her lead the way. She seems content to walk in silence, and I myself have no idea what I could possibly say, so the two of us arrive at her house, having said nothing since getting off the bus. Emmy's mother opens the door and doesn't seem surprised to see me standing next to her daughter. I expect that Emmy would have phoned ahead to let her mother know, know of the change in plans. Emmy, Hisayo, you're just in time. Lunch is just about ready. Great, I was afraid we might we might be running late. <clears throat> as fast as you as you were going this morning, I doubt there was much of a chance of that. I certainly hope she wasn't too much of a bother as I she, she tends to get a little paranoid about being on time when food's involved. 
<clears throat> I hadn't noticed. This earns me a swat on the arm from Emmy, who despite the serious nature of our conversation on the bus and the almost brooding quiet walk, has quickly become cheerful again. Probably to keep her mother from, from worrying about whatever it is, it, it is Emmy plans to tell me later. Mrs. Ibrazaki ushers us in, and in short order we're around the table devouring lunch. I hadn't realized how hungry I was until I got here, but, I, but for once I seem to be eating almost as much as Emmy. Goodness, it's a good thing I made so much the two of you are acting like you haven't eaten in days. I skipped breakfast this morning. Huh, <laughs> me too. Yeah, I do the same sometimes. Actually, most of the time, actually. Had to catch the bus, I assume. I assume, you know, question mark. That, and I figured you'd make too much food so it wouldn't matter if I skipped breakfast. Well, it's good to know that I'm predictable. Emmy nods enthusiastically and conversation falls off again as we very nearly clear the table of anything edible. It is a testament to the sheer amount of food on offer that we don't finish everything. I lean back in my chair with a sigh and thank Mrs. Ibarazaki for the food. I'm glad you liked it, Hisayo. Now, has Emmy told you where we're going? Yeah, sort of. Is it far from here? <clears throat> Not really, but we'll drive there to save time. It closes, it closes kind of early. <clears throat> I nod an ascent and stand up ready to, ready to go. Well then, shall we? Mrs. Ibrazaki nods and leaves the room to grab her keys. Emmy, uh, Emmy, no, I notice, has started to fidget nervously. Second thoughts? Emmy smiles tightly at, at me and shrugs. She's fallen silent again, which probably means that I'm right, and she's starting to regret bringing me along. Not that I blame her. She's done such a good job of shutting me out that I doubt it's easy to suddenly open up. Honestly, I'm worried that she's forcing it. But she said while waiting for the bus that I'm not supposed to give her a chance to back out, and since I and since I promised to go with her anyway, I suppose there's not much of a choice. I can't go back on my promise, and she can't go back on hers. I just hope the both of us are up to it. We're off. Emmy's mother blows through the dining room, collect, collects the two of us, and heads out the door at a brisk pace. Now I know where her daughter gets it from. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, so he is dead, unfortunately. But it was either these two, and I had a feeling, I was leaning mainly towards that he's probably dead, and yeah, so. The car pulls up at the cemetery gates, and I feel Emmy tense up b beside me. I reach over and give her hand a comforting squeeze, which causes her to relax a little. Emmy's mother doesn't follow us, explaining that she prefers to visit the grave alone. Emmy steps through the gates and looks back as if to make sure I'm still there. We step into the cemetery. I don't feel comfortable in, in cemeteries. Gravestones litter the ground, each one, serving as a reminder that someone used to be alive and is no longer. I remember in my last Legend of Zelda gameplay where I said I was gonna visit the graveyard. I didn't really go in too deep, but I, you know, checked around. I was with my uncle at the time, but we didn't go through that far. Cause it's like really awkward when you go visit and like there's, it's a cemetery. Bear in mind that was a long time ago, 2016. So, you know, it doesn't really matter anymore, but you know. Um, and the thing is though, is that when she said that they're visiting this they visit the cemetery on the anniversary of her father. That's kind of the exact same idea I have, except not on the anniversary of death, but rather than the birthday. Like say for example, if my grandparents, one of my grandparents passes away, I'd definitely go to their gravesite on their birthday and make a prayer and stuff and everything and give them a flower and stuff like that. But you know. That depends on which grandparents, though, because I have two of them that live in Canada, so it's not like I could do that on their birthday, but I can do it, like, when I, right, when that birthday passes and I, at the time I visit, and you get what I'm saying. I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but, you know, it was an appropriate time to talk something like that 
on this part so you know yeah gravestones yeah how many died young how many were as old as i am now when do i wind up with a marker of my own how much longer do i have left the concept of not waking up not seeing emmy anymore is not a happy one it frightens me and i very very nearly turn around and exit right then and there yeah i mean death can be scary for either some or most i don't really know but you know i don't want to go among to, to go among dead people i don't want to see their stones and think about who they were or what they could have been if they only had more time then i look at the girl next to me and my resolve returns and me striding purposely down the path eyes clear setting a pace that's very nearly a jog the sooner we get there i suspect she thinks the better we're here. Oh, wow. A gravestone wholly unremarkable in everything except for the name etched upon it. The grass has grown up around the base. Emmy's eyes are riveted to the stone. After a few moments, he turns around looking surprisingly calm yet solemn. Pink's not actually my favorite color, you know. <laughs> or what? I'm warming up to it. Ah. People tend to think that pink's my favorite color. I think it's because I like strawberries, and even though those are red, they just assume that pink's the right color for strawberry. Strawberries. And that it's my favorite color, but it's not. I'm too polite to tell anyone otherwise, of course. And it's not the kind of thing worth getting worried about, but I'll bet even you thought pink was my favorite color. Blue, that's my favorite color. My mom and dad are the only two who know that, and now you do too. Oh, wow. Thanks for telling me, I think. You're welcome. There's a pause as she considers what to say next, drawing a quick breath. I can't carry a tune to save my life. I can hum, but actually singing a song is something I've never been able to do. I don't mind because I'm not a fan of karaoke anyway. Well, that's one potential date idea out the window. Haha, <laughs> no karaoke. People all think that I'm a really popular and friendly person, but I only have a few close friends. Probably because I keep everyone in the dark, but I think it's also because I hate the idea of losing a close friend. There aren't many people worth the risk. I'm terrible at saying goodbye. Is something it's I sometimes think that I only run because it's what I used to do with my father. You're not my first boyfriend. I dated a guy for a long while. Oh damn. <laughs> so he was not his her first. Fuck. That sucks. <laughs> oh boy. I did it a guy for a long while during my second year at Yamaku, but in the end we broke up because I didn't want to get closer to him. He couldn't live with that distance between us. <laughs> Her rate of speaking increases slightly as if she's rushing towards the finish line. I'm actually one year older than you. Oh wow. Everybody thinks I'm younger because I'm short, but I had to skip one school year because of my accident. Oh, okay. And also, I don't really, you know, it doesn't really matter if a girl is, like, one year older than me and stuff. Like, really, it doesn't matter. I mean, my mom, my mom is, is, I think, six months older than my dad. Yeah, six or seven months. Sorry, I was counting. But some, uh, something like that. But yeah, definitely a whole few months older. They initially thought I was paralyzed when they pulled me out of the wreckage. I'd lost my legs already, but they were afraid that I wouldn't even be able to use what was left of them. After surgery, it was clear that their initial assessment was mistaken. I couldn't feel my legs because of shock, short-term paralysis, paralysis due to the other trauma I'd experienced. Wait. My recovery was one of the fastest they'd ever seen, or so they told me. I never found out if they were serious about that, or if they told me to all the patients learning to walk. Hold on, I want to uh, reread something. Wait. Uh, they initially thought I was paralyzed when they pulled me out and out of the wreckage. I'd lost my I'd lost my legs already, but they were afraid 
that I wouldn't even be able to to use what was left of them. I just, it was, just was missing. I couldn't feel my legs because of shock, short-term paralysis due to the other drugs. Oh wow, they just took off her legs for nothing, did they? That fucking sucks, man. That that just fucking sucks. Damn. You know, I always thought that she was born when she was born her legs were like defected or she, you know, like they're deformed, kind of like Rin. She was born with deformed arms and stuff. So they just removed it when she was a baby, but nope, it turns out they were amputated. Jeez. Yep. My recovery is one of say I never found out that they were serious or that they told me that all to all the patients learning to walk again. I she pauses, gathering herself for one last effort. Eight years ago today I lost my legs and I lost my father as well. He died on the on the way to the hospital. I didn't even get to go to the gravesite until two months later and couldn't attend his funeral. I'm so sorry. Don't be. That's what everyone always says, that they're sorry. I hate hearing that. Like anyone could have done anything to change what happened. You know, you know the best piece of advice I got? These things happen. I don't even remember who said it, but I guess they didn't have anything better to say. But it's true, you know? These things happen and there's nothing you can do about it. They aren't necessarily planned and they aren't always bad, but and they aren't always good, but they are. So I made the decision that I would have, I would live without worrying about the future. And to be sure that I never had to say goodbye again, I decided I wouldn't let people get close to me anymore. Excuse me. After all, they could be taken away at any time, and you know, th and you know what? She laughs a little bitterly. Her eyes start to well up with tears, and I step for forward to embrace her, but she holds up a hand to stop me. I'm not finished. A deep breath and she continues. It worked pretty well until I met you and saw that you were trying to adjust to stuff here. So I thought I'd help and then you were so nice and I couldn't help it. I just... Oh my god. The tears are, f are flowing now and she accepts the embrace this, this time. The rest of her sentence is mumbled into my chest. I tried not to fall for you, but I did, and then I tried to keep you at a distance, like with my first boyfriend, but I couldn't. But I've been, so, I've been so scared because I don't want you to, I don't want to lose you, and I might anyway. Hey, I'm still, I'm still around, right? And maybe I won't be forever. But don't you think it'll be fun while it lasted? Neither of us could survive the day. There could be a bus crash or something, but as long, but so long as I know that. I've been with you, I don't think it matters. A sudden thought strikes me and I can't help laughing. My condition had me scared of dying so badly that I immediately seized on the opportunity and Emmy presented to improve my odds of living longer. But without Emmy, would there have been any motivation to keep up with my running? It hits me that Emmy is the reason I want to go running every day, so I can spend as much time with her as possible. Emmy looks up at me confused. We'll go on living until we stop, and when we stop living we'll be able to know that at least we've had time together and I wouldn't have, have it any other way, because I love you Emmy, and right now that's enough for me. Emmy smiles through her tears and steps back from me. You know it's funny. What is it? What is? I thought that the best way to live in the, in the moment was to do it alone, but now I don't think I'd have to have it any other way either. I'm glad I met you, Hisayo. Well, these things happen. Emmy and, and I stay by the grave for a while as Emmy pays her respects to her father. When she's ready to go, we exit the graveyard side by side. Emmy's mother drives us back to Yamaku. The trip back is very quiet. We wave goodbye as the car drives off, and I glance down at the girl leaning on my arm. How are you feeling? Wow, the feels in this were fucking intense, man. I love it. Emmy shrugs non-committedly. I'll be fine. Come on, let's go.